Well, there, Ed Moses here, and uh, hey, I'm doing another book review. Uh, finished another pretty cool book. Uh, you ever heard of Awakening to Zero Point by Greg Braden? If you have, I really highly recommend it. it uh, it's a good read. It's 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 a lot of uh, technical stuff in here, uh, but the, but the crazy thing about his writing is he is. Basically, spirituality meets uh, science. So if you're familiar with Greg Braden, you will understand that that's pretty much what this is. Now, to my knowledge, this is his first book. Uh, it was, it was a, I don't re really think it was originally supposed to be a book, per se. It was more like a study guide. Uh, but for some reason, it went over so well, it became a book. And essentially... You know, what, what, what it's really about is you've got a um, zero point it has to do with the magnetic field that the Earth is basically under. And um, what's happening is, according to this book, and it's from like 95 or something like that, uh, according to this, this particular book, the magnetic field is actually becoming weaker on the Earth. And what, what this is actually doing is slowing down the rotation of the Earth on a, you know, on a scientific level. Uh, that's what's happening. And, I, and from what I'm understanding, that every 100 years it's slowing down by 6%. Uh, and from what, what Greg says, it sounds like it's his opinion that we could actually encounter this happening where, where we actually the magnetic field actually goes to zero in our lifetime and if this actually happens uh, this there's here's the crazy thing what will happen is it'll pause and then start going the opposite direction because it'll have cre it'll start creating a new uh, magnetic field and it starts turning the other way but here's the bad thing about this um, when this happens, what will happen, it, it's going to be like the same effect that if, like, let's say you're driving 70, 70 miles per hour down a highway and all of a sudden you have to hit your brakes. Well, you know that when you hit your brakes, what happens is everything that's in the car flies forward, right? Well, it's the same idea uh, uh, if that happens with the earth because what will happen is all the water that's, you know, set, you know, flowing a certain direction. Well, it's still flowing that way. You know how the waves come in on the ocean. If it's still flowing that way, all, all of a sudden, you know, boom! It's like the Earth slams its brakes on, and now all of a sudden everything's going the other way. Well, that's going to cause like tidal waves and all kinds of crazy things, and you know, there's going to be a lot of flooding and and, and devastation. So, you know. It, to me, I, I kind of hope that I don't get to experience that, <laughs> uh, if, if it is possible that it would happen in, in our lifetime. Um, on a spiritual level, this is very interesting, because on a spiritual level, the lower the magnetic field, the actual ability to be you know, more psychic and consciousness becomes stronger. Uh, it's, it's actually... It's a, I mean, it's a good thing on those levels because what's, what's happening is, and this is something, uh, I could explain it this way, like, and he mentions this in the book, uh, during the 8th dynasty uh, in Egypt, they had what was called the mystery schools. And the mystery schools were actually schools of consciousness where they taught consciousness. And they practiced it, and it was, you know, with is a mental thing. Uh, and what they did was these practices were done at a high level inside of a pyramid. And the reason they did it that way is because they could get it situated in a room in a pyramid where the magnetic uh, magnetics was very low, which made it easier to practice this type of uh, skill. And so this is what was happening in ancient Egypt. Well, at the same thing, it's happening naturally now in in in, you know, on this earth, because of the, the lower the magnetic field is going, it's easier for us to have more psychic experiences, to 
be able to manifest things uh, in the same sense of if you've ever noticed like uh, karmic things. You know, if you're having bad karma, it happens faster than maybe it used to. Um, it has to do directly with that as well. And, you know, I don't know, a lot of people say they don't believe in ghosts and all that. Well, that's fine, whatever, but, you know, there's been a lot more um, people saying that they have seen uh, ghosts or apparitions than they used to. And uh, because of this magnetic change also, has, it could have a direct effect on this as well. So, um, so how does this all entwine? You know, spirituality and the science of all this. Well, the crazy thing is this. After reading this, I can understand why science and spirituality should actually go together. I can see that they should. Uh, but sadly, you know, in the Christian religion, was what happened was because the church wanted to have more control over people in general, a lot of the uh, chapters or, or pages of the scriptures had been removed that would have allowed people to realize that they have free will on a spiritual level and the churches really didn't want people to know this stuff. So those parts of the Bible were removed so that you know, this, this information was kept secret, it's kept quiet, but through Greg's studies, he actually went into uh, some uh, places all around the world that, uh, that had archives of, of ancient, uh, a lot of these ancient uh, writings that he was actually allowed to, to look at, and, and some of these places were like, uh, like uh, like Buddhist temples uh, in India, there was some places he went. And just all over the world, he, he traveled and he went to these uh, places of spirituality where he was actually able to uh, go to some of these libraries that were aren't even known very well to uh, uh, people today because they want to keep this stuff secret and quiet and uh, it's history, you know. People want they want to protect this information, uh, but these artifacts are still available, but they're well hidden. So anyway, Greg had the opportunity to actually go and read things like the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, these chapters of the uh, the Bible that was actually removed, uh, and found that a lot of this information that was you know in these in these ancient uh, uh, texts were actually very similar, and they were all saying kind of the same thing about us as humans having these abilities to manifest, create, and, and, and change our, the world around us just through uh, emotion and compassion. And it's, it seems like a very crazy uh, concept because basically what he's saying is it's not what we know so much as what we don't know that changes the world around us. Uh, and that's on a subconscious level. Um, consciously, we have been trained to believe that, you know, we, if you, if you can see it, it's real. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Well, actually, what he's saying in, in, in this particular book is that's not true. It's actually what a lot of things we can't see do exist. And a lot of things we can't see that we're doing is actually changing the world around us. So, anyway, to, to cut this short, this is a very good book. It's a must read. Whether you believe it or not, you know, that's fine. It's up to you. But it's a good book. It's worth reading because it really opened me up to a lot of different things that I, I never really thought about. And... You know, I've seen a lot of his videos on YouTube and started to realize, you know, his studies and, and, and what he's really about. And I'll tell you what, he's got, he, this guy's pretty awesome. I, I really like Greg Braden. And this, this book, uh, yeah, read it. If you get a chance, read it. It's, it's definitely worth uh, taking the time to read. It's an older book now, like I said, uh, but a lot of it is, it's, it's still, it's, it's still good for the time, you know, 
it, it's not outdated, let's put it that way. The only thing it's missing is uh, uh, some of the, the more recent devastations that have happened, you know, since, you know, after 95 and such that never made the book, but, uh, but you can kind of correlate some of that to what he's saying because it, it kind of, it makes sense. You can uh, wrap your mind around that. So, anyway... I appreciate you watching this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed my review of this book by Greg Brayton, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye now.